As a man who dares to dream big and utilize the power of technology to turn his dream into reality, Elon Musk has taken the bold step to relocate the human race into space and first conquer the moon, develop it before moving ahead to create a human colony of about 1 million population on Mars. Technology has never stunned the world to this extent in this era until Elon Musk and SpaceX went beyond human imagination to launch the Falcon Heavy in space and successfully landed it back on the launch pad at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida on the 15th of January, 2023. Even NASA, busy developing its space rocket for years now, hasn't seen this type of flawless success in recent times. If wishes were horses, by today, NASA will find its way to the moon and settle there. Hence, SpaceX success will again cement NASA's trust in SpaceX. NASA's administrator, Bill Nelson, will no longer be worried about how Twitter is consuming Elon's attention, which might be the source of distraction to slow down the progress of the lunar landing contract won by SpaceX to land NASA's astronauts on the moon. Let's discuss how SpaceX plans to land the Starship on Mars by mimicking the Falcon Heavy's landing style. Recent SpaceX Falcon Heavy success landing concept will be a stepping stone for the company to believe and work hard towards their goal of landing on Mars. For instance, the two-sided boosters of Falcon Heavy, which fired up the Tri-Union rockets above the Earth's atmosphere, on reaching the lower Earth's Earth orbit detach themselves from the central boosters and find their path to land back on the launch pad. This scenario shows a perfect movie of how the Starship will successfully land on Mars, but there's a problem. How can the Starship land successfully on Mars when the Martian atmosphere is lighter than that of our beloved Earth? That means landing the Starship on Mars will require much more thrust than landing it here on Earth. Let's further explain this. Normally, the Starship landings need a belly flop to slow down re-entry on Earth. But Mars, with its relatively very thin atmosphere, won't allow the re-entry of Starship to be effective, which will result in a hard landing and virtually make it a hard hit on the surface of Mars, leading to the complete explosion of the vessel. On Earth, a Starship can lose up to 99% of its orbital speed due to the thermal re-entry into the atmosphere and its eventual change to the terminal speed. This means that not only a small amount of fuel is needed for the flip and landing maneuver here on Earth, and a Starship only moves at 90 meters per second when it flips. As for the height at which the Starship will land on Mars, it will lose only 99% of its orbital speed. This means that its final speed will be about 450 meters per second, which is about five times faster than on Earth. But don't forget that Starships are designed to have a Delta V speed of about 7,000 meters per second when fully fueled. So 450 meters per second is not a big deal in this case. It should also be noted that for the Starship to land on the surface of Mars, it needs to have almost no fuel left in the tank to make it much lighter and easier to slow down. And it only has to fight about 38% of the gravity that the Starship does in the Earth's atmosphere. So landing on Mars with its thin atmosphere is still a good way to get rid of most of the incoming speed, as long as the Starship has enough thrust to complete the landing process. First, the Starship will enter the Martian atmosphere at a high velocity. Similar to how a spacecraft enters Earth's atmosphere during re-entry, the shape of the Starship's body, similar to a lifting body, will generate lift and slow down the Starship. This will allow the Starship to decelerate from hypersonic speed to subsonic speed, reduce the heat load on the Starship, and survive the re-entry process. As the Starship nears the Martian surface, it will deploy its Raptor engines, which are specially designed for use in the vacuum of space and the thin atmosphere of Mars. These engines will perform a powerful landing by firing hot gases at the high velocity opposite to the direction of landing, similar to how the two side boosters of the Falcon Heavy landed on Earth on Sunday, January 15th, at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The Starship will also have the capability to land propulsion, using its engines to perform a controlled descent to the surface. This will allow the Starship to make precise landings and touchdown at a specific location on Mars. Just as expected, the Starship will be equipped with a number of advanced systems to ensure a safe landing. These include a guidance, navigation, and control system, a radar system for detecting obstacles, and a set of cameras and sensors to provide a detailed view of the landing site. In addition, 
the Starship will also carry a number of redundant systems and backup systems to ensure that it can continue to operate even if one or more systems fail. The Starship will also carry several payloads to support its missions on Mars. These payloads will include scientific instruments to study the planet's atmosphere, geology, and potential resources, and equipped to support human habitation, such as life support systems and power generators. Additionally, the Starship will be able to transport cargo and equipment for future missions, such as rover drills, and 3D printers to establish a sustainable human presence on the planet. Landing on Mars is challenging, but SpaceX has developed a comprehensive plan to safely land its Starship on the Martian surface. By using a combination of aerodynamic descent and powered landing, the Starship will be able to safely and accurately land on Mars. Furthermore, the Starship will be equipped with advanced systems, redundant systems, and payloads to support its mission on Mars. It will be able to transport cargo and equipment for future missions to help establish a sustainable human presence on the planet. Now, you may be wondering what the first Mars lander will do when they get there. Now, to have an idea. One of the primary goals of these missions will be to conduct scientific experiments in order to study the geology, atmosphere, and potential signs of past or present life on Mars. This will involve taking samples of the Martian soil and rocks, analyzing the planet's geology, and studying its atmosphere to understand its weather patterns and how human lives can be sustained. Another key duty of the first Mars lander is to take photographs and gather other data to help scientists better understand the planet and plan for future missions. This will include mapping the planet's surface, studying the planet's mineralogy, and determining the location of potential resources such as water water ice, and other mineral resources that will help during infrastructural construction. In addition to conducting scientific experiments, some of the first Mars landers may also deploy rovers or other mobile instruments to explore the planet's surface. These rovers will be able to move around the planet's surface, allowing scientists to study different areas of the planet and gather data more efficiently. Another important task the first Mars lander will have is to test technologies that will be used in future human missions to Mars. These may include testing life support systems, extracting resources from the Martian soil, and developing methods for landing and taking off from the planet's surface. Overall, the first Mars lander will play a critical role in helping scientists better understand the planet and pave the way for future missions, including the potential for human exploration of Mars. No doubt, the life of the first Martian occupants on Mars will be extremely difficult, uninteresting, and fraught with perils. There is a high risk that most of them will not survive even the first year on the new planet. Planet. But, on the other hand, it might be the adventure of a lifetime, and we are absolutely certain that there will be people ready to put everything at risk to see the rocky landscape of inhospitable Mars. The future colonizers may be aware of the undertaken risk. Therefore, it is believed that the first colonizers will be selected by Elon Musk himself. The practical skills of the members of the first Martian crew will be matched so that they can prepare the initial infrastructure. Only later will commercial flights to Mars be offered to any Anyone who can afford it. SpaceX is getting everything ready to accomplish its goal from head to toes of the system. They have even officially revealed its new huge update on Crew Starship Interior System. Click on the video to know more about this and take a look at the interior of the ship.